Hi everyone, my name is Katherine and I wanted to do a video about substitute teaching and what to bring, what not to bring, uh, things to include in your sub bag, just a little, uh, a few little tips. Uh, I just became a substitute teacher. I substitute mostly for elementary school um, and then our special education school that we have where I live. So when I was looking to see what kind of things were available online for um, tips and ideas for substitutes. I was looking on Pinterest and YouTube and I found some really good things, but nothing that really gave me a lot of insight on what to bring and what not to bring. And so the first two times that I substituted went pretty well. And after a couple more times, I kind of learned what to bring, what not to bring, and things that kids like, things that kids don't like. And so I've compiled a bag which I'd like to show y'all just for other subs out there who are kind of looking for some hints and tips and tricks. So the first thing is you need a bag and you can use an ordinary tote bag. It doesn't have to be Disney Princess. Or I have a bag that I got as a gift from the Raw McDonald House of Dallas when I was an intern there. And it's a 31 bag and I'm not sure of the name but um, you could probably find it on the 31 website it's kind of like a utility tote and it's perfect for substituting as well as other things too I like it because it has all of these pockets up here in the front it has other pockets here and then pockets on the side and in the middle it's just one big huge open bag so the first thing um, that's kind of important, actually, um, you'll find when you're going, especially for like younger elementary students, that a lot of them either don't have crayons or maybe have some crayons and markers, but not all the colors. And so instead of um, them bugging their neighbor for that blue crayon that they need, um, I've invested in some crayons, but not just any crayon. Um, these were on clearance at Target and they're the UV Jumbo crayons. Now, I got the Jumbo ones for a couple of reasons. Um, first reason is they don't break easily. The second reason, if a kid borrows it, I know it's mine because most kids have the regular size markers or crayons. So they're big and they're thick um, and there's 12 colors in here. And they came in really uh, pretty handy today when that exact scenario happened. So these were only a dollar seventy four for twelve, which is pretty good, um, especially for jumbo crayons. The next thing, which is quite important, is some little uh, sticky notes, post-it notes for you to take notes or things you want to write down. This is something I got at a child life conference, so you know, just something for you in case you need to make any kind of notes. Sometimes it's hard to find in the teacher's classroom. Some teachers are really organized and some aren't. You'll find that out. A whistle with on a keychain that you can find. This is essential for the playground because Lord have mercy, the playground is huge and there's a zillion kids and the kids might not know you and the certain call, but if they hear the whistle, every kid on the playground is gonna look. So get yourself one. It'll save your voice too. Okay. I was at Staples a few weeks ago and they had these erasers in a three pack for 17 cents a pack. Such a bargain. So I picked up a bunch and I put one of the three packs in my bag because there's always that kid who doesn't have an eraser and they need one to do their work. So just stick one in your bag. All right. Next, next, next. Oh yes. So important here. Expo markers. Um, these are actually a lot cheaper nowadays than they were when I was a kid. I think I got four markers for four dollars at Target. Um, you know, you could say like, oh, well, that the teacher should have these. True, but they might not work or they don't have them at all. So better to be prepared than not prepared. So I got some fun colors, lime green, pink, light blue, and dark blue. I just, I keep them in my bag. Um, I'm kind of a germ freak. Um, a little bit. I like to use my own stuff when I go. Um, you just, I don't know. It's just personal preference. 
But yeah, I mean, just and, and the reality is that they might have markers, but they might not work and or they don't have them at all. So it's just better to be prepared so you can have a successful day um, as much as possible, even though it is hard being a sub. Um, I just like to pack stuff that I know I'll need. This I got today, partly because I love glitter, but I got some uh, glitter glue. And this can come in handy I, um, if a kid's glue doesn't work, and that's happened a couple of times with that liquid glue. Um, this is obviously not a product I'd let kids use. I'd probably let them, I'd probably like, squeeze a little bit of glue for them, but um, just something fun, basically. Not a necessity, just because. Um, the second other thing that's really important is a first aid kit. I got this one um, while I was on vacation at Target and it was in the sec they had like a Hot Wheels one and a Princess one I think but it's and it came with some stickers and like some essential um, like first aid needs like a little Neosporin and um, some alcohol cleansing wipes and um, gauze here. And it came with princess band-aids, but of course boys don't like princess band-aids. So um, I've kind of filled it in with some basic band-aids and then the new trend now is Shopkins and Batman. So I've got Shopkins and Batman band-aids and then I have some small uh, princess band-aids for smaller injuries. Um, be warned that if, you, if a kid needs a band-aid and he gets one and he shows all his friends that it's a Batman, then everyone's gonna pick up their wounds and need a band-aid. So it's a you know trial and error kind of thing, but it's so much easier to have something in the classroom that you know where it is than sending the kid down to the nurse just to get a band-aid. I mean, it's just that kind of stuff. So, you know, just plan ahead and it doesn't have to be in this kind of box. This is just what I have. So, um, next thing would be stickers. Oh my goodness, stickers. So I went to Michael's today because they had their all their um, Easter stuff, spring Easter, 60% off. So these were each um, 59 cents. So I try to stick with stickers that have a gender neutral theme that I could give to either a boy or a girl. Clearly some um, are more for girls than they are for boys, but I have had the best luck at Michael's with stickers. I went to Walmart and I didn't really see anything that was, because I mean these, sticker packs have like 300 stickers in them which is great because I want it to last a long time and um I tried Target and you know they just they have some in the dollar section which I've gotten some of those from there but I think Michael's because you can even use a coupon if you want to um has the best selection of these jumbo packs of stickers so something I do with my stickers, and I actually learned this from my special education school that I teach at sometimes when they have an opening. Um, for the middle school students I worked with, they had a system called a reward system. And then the word reward was spelled out each letter on a poster and then put on the wall. And then each student had like a paw print um, laminated paper piece with their name on it. And every 20 minutes, if they were well behaved, following directions and working, then they move their paw, for, paw print from the R to the E. And this was done every 20 minutes and clearly there's not you know, enough time in the whole class period to get from R to D, but um, it was an incentive for them because when they got to the D, that meant that they got to participate in pet therapy that week and be like an active participant and with the dogs, which is really big for them. So I kind of adapted that same principle and those same ideas with my stickers. So for kids, when they're starting to work on an assignment, um, I'll say, you know, in 10 minutes, I'm gonna come, or in five or five minutes or so, I'm gonna come around and if you're working, I'll give you a sticker. And you know, that really like snaps, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get something if I'm working and I mean, there's pros and cons. People say, you know, you shouldn't reward, you know, like behavior if they're working. I get it. But when you're a sub, you're just trying to get through that day and, um, you know, make it as smooth as possible. So stickers, you know, just, just give them a sticker. It's not going to hurt. And there's different sizes of stickers. You could go with a smaller one and then end the day with a bigger one, that kind of thing. So 
I love the sticker thing and I try to get them obviously when they're on clearance it makes life a lot easier and lower on the budget so um, the next thing that I found helpful were uh, in the target target dollar spot they have those um, like small packs of uh, manipulative toys so currently they have Legos like a pack of 72 Legos they're not the real Legos but Legos for a dollar and me being a child life intern specialist to be person I work in the ER and we do this pretty much you give when we give out toys um, in the ER for kids to play with while they're waiting we put them in boxes like this and you know let them play with it so that kind of idea transpired over to this and so I got a couple of bags of Legos each and they're just the cheapy ones but they're a buck and then I put them in this box I got from Target which was on sale I think I paid two dollars for this box but it's a latch latching box and it's just something that I give the kids to do if they finished everything and it, they're just kind of antsy or need something to do the computer's not working which happens quite often um, so I'll let three or four of them play with this at the end of the day and it works really well as far as crowd control I had my second grade kids yesterday playing with these at the end um, and it's not like it's I mean I tell them like we can't make any weapons or anything horrible like that and they understand um, but that's if their behavior was excellent all day and if they've got everything done um, and a lot of the times you'll find that um, the computers don't work or the internet is down so you need that backup plan and so it's better to have a backup plan than no plan at all so I'm not saying I use these with every class but certain classes certain kids yes so those are just my tips and tricks um, I'm still learning this substitute thing and working every day to improve on that oh I almost forgot not the end so <laughs> How could I forget this? So I have my prize box, which is just another latching tote from Target that was on sale as well. I can't believe I forgot about this. Um, and so this is if kids have not had any discipline issues all day. They've been following directions. They get to pick one item from the box. And I just refilled it. I can't believe I forgot. Um, so I have pencils cute pencils in here and they're just fun prints I got these pencils I think they were in a pack of 30 for two dollars at Walmart and I pre sharpen them so the kids can use them right away they don't have to worry about sharpening them um, I also got some just regular pencil copy erasers because as you will see in those elementary grades how many erasers are no longer on the pencils um, Target dollar spot also had these fun um, little jelly bean erasers and um, butterfly erasers that were like, I don't know how many, but they were a dollar in, the, in a big pack. Um, and then I also got at Walmart some stencils like these. Um, so like I said, if they're good and there's no issue. So I do the stickers and I do the prize box. That's kind of a new thing that I figured out. Um, it really keeps their attention all day and has um, it's something that they can look forward to. Um, that's just my personal preference. That's what I do with the kids, um, but it really does. It really works well for me. So those are just some ideas. Um, you know, it's really wherever you're working um, and in whatever grade you decide to work with, um, you'll figure out kind of what works best in your school district. In my school district, um, for the first two months, all the substitutes have to be in the southern end of the district, which um, is not that desirable to be. Um, the classes are a lot harder um, as far as um, behavior wise so I do the incentive for that reason and the kids are able to follow through. So not all of them but some of them. Um, but it's really taught me a lot about working with all different types of children in a very diverse population. So you know whatever you got going on I uh, hope this video helped. Hope it gave you some ideas um, 
just, you know, whatever you feel that's best for your situation in your district is really all that you can do. So best of luck to y'all um, and hope that these tips help you out in the future. Bye.